Hey guys and welcome back to a new amazing video. In this video I will show you how you can migrate an existing XML project to a Compose project in Compose codebase. I do already have a migration video um, how you can actually do this from both sides. So how you can use XML views in Compose and how you can use Composables in XML. But I felt like that video wasn't really practical. So in this video I really want to show you a real project or at least how I approach migrating a real project from XML to Compose. So this won't be a real project in the sense that it does something that, uh, that makes sense, but you can apply these steps and the right order of these steps that I show you here to any other project. So if you have a Node app, a to-do app or anything else you're working on that is written in XML, then after this video, you know, okay, now I need to do this, then this, then this to finally migrate it to Jetpack Compose code. You can see that's just a very simple project two screens, um, so we have an activity and two fragments here, and we can just yeah, click next and previous to see both of these screens. You can find the initial code for this project, which we will migrate together in this video, down in this video's description, so there you will find a GitHub link and you can just clone this or just use your own project um, next to that and also just follow the steps that I show you here. Let's actually dive into it. So I am here in main activity and this main activity is implemented with uh, two fragments or rather hosts two fragments using uh, the navigation component library to perform the navigation. You can see we have a nav controller reference and that is just used for these buttons that we have in first uh, fragment and second fragment right here to navigate to the next screen. And here I think we just um, I don't know, we actually navigate back. So we could also just pop the back stack here to not make it infinitely big, but let's not care about that. We first of all want to go to our build Gradle file because of course what we need to do is we need to add our Compose dependencies so that we are able to use Compose in our XML project here. I want to start migrating or changing the compile SDK to 33. This is not that much related to Compose, but uh, rather to the latest Compose compiler version, which I want to use here. So just make sure that you're using the same. Then we want to scroll down and want to add a config block here. Uh, those will be build features. And here we just need to tell Gradle, hey, Compose true. Compose is enabled for this project. And we need to add some dependencies for the standard Compose stuff here, which I just paste here. You'll also find these in my repo down below. Um, no Siri, not now. <laughs> um, so we just have the material dependencies, compiler, activity compose, all that standard stuff to write simple composables. If that's done, I would suggest we click synchronize now and hope we don't get any issues, which we don't. Then the next step is to take a look at our different screens. So there are different approaches I, I consider doing when it comes to migrating from XML to Compose. So it could be that in the app you're working on, you're dealing with a really complex screen. Um, so you can imagine a screen with tons of views, tons of logic, then it's of course, it will of course take a while until that whole screen is migrated to Compose. And if you're working in a corporate environment or for a client or so, um, where you're um, we, we might have a deadline or so and you, you don't have an infinite amount of time, then you might not be able to just migrate a whole screen in one go. If that's the case, if you want to start migrating such a screen, then you can also do this step by step. So you only start to migrate single UI components from that screen. And for that, what we can use is a so-called Compose view. That is what we will use anyways here in this video, but um, the approach differs a little bit if you want to migrate a whole screen um, yeah, to compose like all, the whole screen layout, making it compose only, or if you just want to start migrating a single view or single UI component. Let's start with the approach that we want to migrate a whole screen. Uh, then let's say we start with first fragment. My approach with that is, you can see we have view bending stuff here, which you don't need for compose. My approach is that for every single screen you migrate to compose, you go to your project in the, in the corresponding package. I'll just put it, put it in the root one and we create a new file, which will be called whatever the screen is called and then append it with screen. So first screen here, make it a file and let me add that to Git. And here we create our composable for the whole screen. So that is the approach that I always take. So first screen, what does it take in uh, the, as a parameters? Let's first of all actually create a sample view model because I want to show you a real world example where you usually have view models and some kind of screen state. So let's just build a simple demo view model in our root package. First view model, for example, make that a view model. And in here, let's have some kind of first state. 
which will just represent the screen state, which we then expose with a state flow. So state, mutable state flow of first state, and then we expose um, the immutable version of that. So that's just very common stuff, how your XML view model could look like. Then in our first screen, I would recommend to actually just provide the state here. I wouldn't inject the view model here if it's not necessary because um, yeah, with this state, we really keep this screen uh, flexible. So um, it, it's really completely uncoupled from a view model. And then we can initialize the view model one layer or one, yeah, one layer above and then simply pass the state into this screen. And on the other hand, we will simply expose the actions the user can actually take on the screen that we need to send to the view model. So if you're using some kind of MVI architecture, then you usually have um, an actions class. So just a sealed interface, sealed class of different action types that you can uh, emit here as a Lambda function. So for example, on action, and here you have like first screen action. Um, for example, when the user clicks on the next button or so. I don't have that here, so I will just expose Lambda functions for every single thing the user can do. So for example, on next button click or so, which is the only action here, but uh, just that you know how I would do it if you would have these actions, because then you would only need the state and this on action function. But I will simply have an on next click so we can then navigate to the next screen one layer above this first screen composable. And if we now take a look in our emulator, this is how our first screen looks like. So in the end, we just have a column with a text and a button, and that's what we now want to also specify and compose. So we have a column. We say we fill the whole screen size, modifier fill max size. Yes, let's import a modifier from compose UI. We want to say vertical arrangement is arrangement space evenly and the horizontal alignment is center. And then in here, as I said, we just have a simple text that says, what should it say? Hello first fragment, hello first fragment. And below that we have our button. If we click that button, we say on next click and the text of that button will simply be next like that. And that's already our screen, of course, a very simple one, uh, but it's all about knowing how, like the, the steps that you need to take to migrate your existing XML project to compose. So you just create a screen composable, implement your UI, which uh, you of course need to do individually for your project. But then we can take this composable now, go to our first fragment. So I would still use fragments if you migrate this. And actually in here, we want to set up a compose view. So compose view is in the end a view in which we can yeah, set composable content. That is what we want to do here. So we want to get rid of this whole view binding stuff since we don't need this anymore. Get rid of um, this here. Get rid of this button on click listener. Well, let's leave it for now so we can copy it later. And here in on create view where we say, hey, that's the content of our fragment. We simply want to return a compose view. So we say return compose view create that with a require context. And we might also want to put that in a global variable, private let init variable, compose view. And we can then say, okay, after we initialize that, we also want to initialize our compose view with our just created compose view. We can also get rid of this question mark. And then here in on view created, we want to say, hey, compose view, this is your content. So we set the content of that. And all we want to set here is first screen. So our first screen composable that we just created. We now of course need to assign some kind of state to that first screen. And we also want to have an on next click function. That will be easy because here we can just copy the on click listener code from our actual button that we used in XML and simply paste it here. Get rid of this code. And what do we now pass for the state? Here we of course now need to listen to our state from the view model, which we could also initialize here. Private valve view model is a first view model by view models like this. So we now want to take a look at this state, observe it, convert it to a composed state, and then simply pass it to our first screen composable. So we can say val state by view model state collect as state. We can then import this and simply pass down our state. And 
Now we already completely migrated this screen to Compose. And the reason why I recommend to still use fragments, at least as long as your whole project is not Compose only yet, is because I would try to keep navigation as a single source. So what I mean by that is that you just use one type of navigation framework to perform your whole app's navigation. So since we use navigation component here, I would not try to confuse this or co um, to combine this with Compose navigation if your project is still, still contains XML parts, because then you just have a single nav graph. It's much easier to um, get an impression of which screens there are in your app. It's much easier to do screen transitions um, in a consistent style. So I would only change this uh, navigation component way of navigating to the Compose way of navigating once all your screens are migrated to Compose layouts. And then if you do that, then you can get rid of all your fragments and simply set up a nav host in your main activity for your Compose screens. But for now, we are fine here. Uh, let's go to our layout folder fragment first and we can now delete this XML file because it's not needed anymore and it has one usage that is not saved oh it's oh no it's actually not needed let's see where the usage is um okay it's just in our nav graph as a tools thingy here let's open that go to split and here we want to get rid of that so we just we don't need the layout here in our nav graph like that we can then delete our XML file fragment first and we're good. And yeah, it's quite impressive how much less code that now is in our fragment. Of course, that code was added here, uh, but we also completely got rid of our XML file. And here we probably have a broken import. So let's hit Control Alt O to get rid of that one. And let's launch our app. I will, of course, also show you what I mentioned before. If you just want to migrate a single UI component to Compose, how that works. But for now, let's launch our app, take a look here, and it should look exactly the same. Um, we did get a compilation error. Let's take a look what that is. Um, okay, this version of the Compose compiler. Oh, one thing I forgot in our Gradle file, if we go back, we need to set the, compiler, uh, the Compose compiler version in some kind of config block here. So if we scroll down to our Compose compiler here, you can see that's version 1.3.2 that we use here, but we also need to specify that here in a separate block called Compose Options. And here we say um, Kotlin, what is it? Kotlin compiler extension version. And we set that to 1.3.2 as well. Let's click synchronize now, try to launch this again. Uh, still a compilation error. What's that now? Um, it requires Kotlin 1.7.2. Okay, seems like we're not using that. We can go to build a Gradle project to fix that. I want to change this value to 2. Synchronize now. Hope nothing else breaks now. Relaunch the app. Take a look. And here is our Compose only screen now, which, uh, yeah, that is now Compose code. We can click next to get to the next screen. Here we can click previous to get to the previous screen. This screen is of course still XML. And to show you how you could now migrate a single UI component to an um, Compose view, we want to go to a fragment second and go to split or just code. And here, let's say this button is now a more complex UI component that we want to migrate to Compose, but not this text view yet. What we can then do is we can simply replace this button with a Compose view. We can get rid of this text because it doesn't have any effect on our Composable. And we can leave the rest as it is. So with this Compose view, we can now just set the content of that Compose view for this specific button while leaving all the other parts of our layout in place. So if we now go to second fragment, here we of course now still need the binding because we also still need our XML file. But what we can do is we can go to on view created and we can say we use our binding instance, a dot button second, you can see that's now a compose view. And we can now set the content of that compose view to a simple button here. So we can say, okay, when we click this button, we execute this code that we would otherwise execute on this XML button click. And we say, okay, the text is now uh, previous, previous. And we can get rid of this on click listener. And that's how we migrate a single UI component to Compose. That's super simple. If we now relaunch this, take a look, 
then we should still be able to see the same result. We can click next. Here's our button previous and we can go back and forth, which works perfectly fine. And that's really all you need to know to migrate an XML project to Compose. So you just need to follow these steps that I showed you in this video and you can just migrate that step by step. You can take your time, you can make it faster, slower as you like, and then you'll have a fully migrated Compose project at some point. If you want to learn more advanced concepts about Android and about Jetpack Compose, then check the link down below in this video's description. You will find some more advanced courses on my website and I'd really appreciate if you could take a look. So these will make you a more advanced Android developer and just go more in detail than I can go here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, enjoy your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.